AI is creating a generation of students who can't actually code or reason their way through problems. Because students can now just use ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or whatever tool to breeze through every assignment or project. So there's no longer a reason to ask your professor for help, open a textbook, or any of that stuff. And I think it's all just reducing the value of CS degrees and making the entire curriculum really outdated. Which is a big problem because companies used to be able to view a degree as a sense of trust. When they saw that degree, they had a baseline assumption. This person knows computer science. They can learn what we need them to learn. But that's not really the case anymore. And I think that's why so many students are lost in this AI era. Because on one hand, there's so many tools, languages, technologies, and stuff you need to know. It feels like you really need to use AI to learn everything and to have decent enough projects on your resume. And on the other hand, we all know deep down that we shouldn't be using AI for everything and that we aren't actually learning when we do. But when you have university assignments, leak code, interview prep, side projects, networking, resume tweaking, lectures, a midterm coming up, it almost seems impossible not to rely on AI. And I get it. As a fellow student, I'm not going to sit here on a high horse. I'm also using AI too. But I've developed a few methods and tricks to actually make sure I'm learning and not just becoming a professional AI prompter. So here's what actually works if you want to build real programming skills, even in the age of AI. Okay, here's the first rule. Before you even think about opening ChatGPT, you need to struggle, like really actually just sit there and struggle. Give yourself at least 30 minutes where you're just sitting there staring at the problem trying to figure it out. I always like to have like a notebook next to me and a pen or a pencil so I can write out pseudocode, draw diagrams, or just basically brainstorm the problem because it kind of forces me to think about it in an abstract level and that's kind of what the struggle is all about. You need to be able to try out implementations even if they're completely wrong. You need to be able to break the problem down into smaller pieces. Basically you you just need to attempt it yourself first because when you do you start to develop actual intuition and you start to see where your thinking breaks down and then once you've genuinely tried not just you know like stared at it and waited 30 minutes then from here you can use ai if you're still stuck or if you need just like a little bit of a push and then when you get whatever answer ai gives you compare it to what you were trying to do and really just ask yourself why did the ai approach it this way and what was i missing what concept did i not understand or did i not even think of and one thing i always like to ask the LLM that I'm using is how I could have came to this solution myself and what I should have recognized when I was trying to do my problem solving. So that's how you can use AI as a learning tool rather than just a crutch. Basically try and use it just to fill in the gaps in your knowledge, not to just skip everything altogether. Okay, next one, you want to be building things from scratch. And I know this probably sounds really tedious. Like why would you build a hash table when you can just import one? Or why would you implement a sorting algorithm when the library already has it? But at least from my experience, I don't really understand something until I've really built it for myself. I'm a very hands-on learner and I kind of have to be able to do something myself in order to then use that thing thing in a project and I found that oftentimes if I'm building something from scratch it really allows me to know all the fundamentals and like intricacies of that thing and this one's especially useful for like data structures and algorithms questions so if you're studying leak code it might be helpful to implement some of the basic algorithms or some of the basic data structures and see how everything works under the hood because it'll help you understand the space and time complexities a lot better so here's what I do I kind of just pick one fundamental concept concept that I want to learn and implement it completely from scratch. So let's say it's like a hash table from university. I already have some theoretical knowledge and, you know, fundamental knowledge on how hashing works. And so from here, I would just kind of try and implement it from memory, maybe open up a textbook. And once I actually do get stuck and I'm really not sure where to go, then I search up what the process might be, whether it's just on like my browser or using AI. And so whatever it is, just force yourself to build it and try to use as little shortcuts as possible because that's how the concepts will actually stick with. You. Okay, next, this is one that I feel like has really helped me and has been really eye-opening. It's to take some code that AI generated for you, maybe from a past assignment or past project, and then just try to explain every single line of that code out loud. And when I say out loud, it doesn't actually have to be out loud, like you can just explain it to yourself in your head but basically what i'm trying to say is just explain it to yourself line by line and it really is like 
every single line like what does this function do why is this declared here what's happening in this loop and i feel like if you're not able to explain it then you don't really understand it and that's fine i would say from there maybe just put a comment or mark those sections down then go actually research the sections that you got stuck on and then learn the concepts until you can explain it clearly and it doesn't even have to be just with ai generated code you can really do this with any code so if you want to look at like a library like an open source repository or just your old projects you can pretty quickly realize there's a lot of gaps that you have that you don't really understand like what this line is doing or why it's there in my university we often have projects where we have to like demo our code to our teaching assistants and then from here they ask us a bunch of different questions they really go line by line and make sure that we didn't just use ai and we actually understood what each line is doing so they might just pick out you know what what is this line 38 doing why are you calling this function why are you using those parameters or you know stuff like that and i feel like preparing for those demos and going through my projects line by line and making sure i understand exactly what's happening really allowed me to internalize all of the knowledge from those projects and that's why i definitely recommend it to you okay next one pick a problem and just solve it completely without ai it could be a leak code problem it could be a function that you're trying to implement in a project that you're working on it could be building a little tool or script for yourself doesn't matter what it is just try and use no ai assistance and so when you're developing whatever code this is try and notice exactly where you get stuck because those stuck points are where you need to focus your learning and the goal isn't just to ban ai forever i'm not saying that ai is bad or you should never use it the goal is really just to build confidence that you can code without it because when you're in a team you're gonna have to be able to explain code to different team members and you're gonna have to kind of just know the fundamental knowledge without having to ask ai for every little thing and not even just that if you're in an interview an exam or you have something that ai can't even comprehend then you won't have the option to just ask ChatGPT. and so that's why i really recommend this solution to just not use ai and try and see how far you can get without it because it'll teach you a lot about where you're at as a developer and from there you can figure out all of the different things that you need to work on in order to improve and so all of these strategies overall i found work pretty well but they require a lot of discipline because if you're like me and you got into programming to solve problems and to automate tasks and to basically make other people's lives easier then in your head you're probably thinking well if this ai tool can just do what I'm trying to do in a second, why not use it? It's going to take a lot of willpower and a lot of discipline to kind of get rid of that mindset and actually employ these different strategies. And here's the thing, even with all these strategies, there's still a fundamental problem with how a lot of people try to learn. It's all passive. For example, reading a textbook or watching a YouTube tutorial or even just watching videos like this. Sure, you're consuming information, but you're not actually building the neural pathways that make you a good problem solver. What you need is something that forces you to actually think something that makes you struggle through problems make mistakes build intuition step by step which brings me to today's sponsor Brilliant. So Brilliant is a learning app that's really great because not only does it have thousands of visual and interactive lessons in a plethora of subjects, but it actively reinforces your problem solving skills while learning. And since we know how important it is to be able to break down problems and have these problem solving skills, especially in the modern world of AI, I think we should go ahead and complete one of these lessons on Brilliant together so that way we can learn how to problem solve correctly in the modern world of programming. And so for example, I've got this new brilliant account up so we can see what it looks like to actually go through the problem solving process and if we go ahead to this courses tabs we can see all of the different learning paths that brilliant has to offer such as data analysis programming logical reasoning technology advanced math and a lot more and just for the sake of our video, let's go ahead and do a programming and CS lesson. And since I can't stress enough how important it is to know our fundamentals, let's go ahead and do the computer science fundamentals course. And as you can see, we are starting off with the manipulating numbers lesson. And as you can see, we get a little description as to what this lesson is going to be about. Computers are number manipulators, web pages, AI models, songs, and operating systems are all represented as a number to a computer. The principles of number manipulation with variables apply across all programming languages. 
So here they actually give us an example of having if conditions in pseudocode. So as we can see, this is kind of like English. We have if it's 8 a.m., if rain is forecasted, but an if conditionals test is usually describing a property of numbers. For example, we have a couple true statements such as four is less than five or negative two is less than or equal to five. And then we also have a few false statements such as nine is less than or equal to eight or five doesn't equal to five. And then right after teaching us how these conditionals work, we're prompted with a question, which is perfect for us because as we know we don't want to be a passive learner in the age of ai especially it's important that we're actually learning and solving problems for ourselves so we have this problem trying to figure out what this algorithm will recommend and we have this pseudocode if 22 is less than 88 email this user else send a push notification and as we know 22 is in fact less than 88 so we know we're going to email this user and let's go ahead and check and as we can see it is correct and now moving on we're actually going to start learning about how to use variables and so as we can see this is a very ground up approach where we're learning every single little detail that is going to help us build all of the fundamental knowledge that we need for example it's showing us that the letter x is frequently used in an algebra formula to represent an unknown value such as f of x is equal to x squared plus 2 whereas in programming variables are places where specific values like 19 and 997 can be stored so you might set x equal to 19 or set y to 997 and so now as we can see we're prompted with another activity to help us reinforce what we just learned about so not only are we getting the theoretical knowledge but we're building hands-on problem solving so here we're trying to write pseudocode that clears the current user count then sets the count to 100 so first let's find the block that sets current users to zero then let's get the block that sends current users to 100 and put it under and let's go ahead and check if this is correct and as we can see it is and so this is a very cool animation that they have when you actually complete a lesson and one thing that i really like about brilliant is just how fun it makes learning it's very aesthetic and visual and really gives me a sense of accomplishment after completing each lesson with all of the achievements and different rewards and it really makes it easy to come back and want to learn every day because of the features like streaks and the competitive features and daily motivation which all just helps to keep you on track and i think brilliant really makes it easy if you're a junior developer or if you're an entry level developer, or if you're just starting out in computer science, it really makes it easy just to jump in and get right on track with your personal skill level and then ramp up later on. So if you wanna try all of this for yourself, to learn for free on Brilliant for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash brilliant lab. Scan the QR code on screen or click on the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. So once again, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you to all of you for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.